Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're back down south with Chris Dalton stalking Chinese water deer under the watchful eye of Paul Childerley and with a real British hero. Okay, this week we're down at, been down at Paul Childerley's. I've had a team of guys down there. We've probably been down there for the best part of a week, actually. First half of the week, we're down uh, near Luton Airport um, on a private estate. And primarily the reason we go down is it's a big shooting estate. So there's a very little limited opportunity to shoot the deer. And they have a bit of a problem with fallow this year, a lot of mutton jack. Um, so we go down and help them. Uh, here's my dog just coming into shot. We go down and help them for about, about a week, sort of nine stalks. We do half of them down in near Milton Keynes and then the rest we're up at Paul's place on Chinese water deer. This particular episode, I've got Elmer out with me of shooting show fame from his rather unusual Elmer Fudd gate, hence the nickname, which is now stuck permanently. Um, took him out really to try for a, uh, we weren't, we shot a decent Chinese water deer last year, which made silver actually. In fact, he collected the shoulder mount and the certificate for that while we were down there. Um, so this time we were really just after cull books, again just helping Paul out. So then we came across on the uh, Wednesday after morning stalk across to Paul's at Beckham's Farm Park here, which is where we've been for the last, again, two and a half days. And I took Paul out yesterday evening, beautiful evening, actually cold. It's really cold this morning, but, but last night was particularly cold, but, but really nice. Sun was out, a lot of deer moving. Saw a number of deer, but quite tricky with Chinese water deer to identify them. Um, I mean, the male tusks are not really visible till probably 12, 18 months old. So you've got to be pretty careful what you're shooting. Um, so we went past a few, there were certainly some good books with them. And we got down into a lovely little sheltered valley at the back of a, a copse, a little wood. And there were two doors laid out in, a, in the sun in a, a wheat field, um, which pretty settled so it actually gave it was a tricky approach but it gave us plenty of time because they were settled they were laid down gave us plenty of time to get into position uh, along the edge of the wood line uh, where we were able to sort of get uh, into position for a shot off the bipod So they were, they were pretty settled and because Paul, I mean, he was bang on with the rifle. I think his range was about 140, 150 metres, something like that. We had a real bench rest position off the bipod, so he actually took a, a high neck shot on the younger of the doors. Um, which, as you'll see, just, just dropped on the spot. So job done, really. That was pretty much the end of, of the week for us. Um, so fairly sort of steady walk back in. Well, as an add-on to this week's clip, um, we've got a little bit of footage with um, a guy called Stevie Richardson. Now, Steve is, Steve is an army veteran from the 2010 um, war in Afghan. Uh, he was out in Helmand province uh, and unfortunately got caught in an IED incident, which resulted in him losing pretty much all of both of his legs and also quite a lot of one of his hands. He's just got kind of the stump of a finger left. 
he contacted me and I think possibly through the ex-military connection I don't know but contacted me and said he really wanted to get into stoking and stoke but wasn't quite sure if he could if he could effectively do anything because of his sort of physical condition but not a problem we can work something out I said at the very least if we sit you in the Argo cat and drive you to a box you know we can do something so he's been probably working with me for probably about four or five months now um, we got him out round in Ayrshire and I think on his first four stokes we managed to get into and shoot four rows so he did quite well so like everybody he's hooked on the sport now so we're just kind of progressing that so what we've actually done is um, we've, he's done his DSC level one and um, we filmed a little bit of that while it was actually taking place I did that on a one-to-one -one basis with him simply because it's, it's obviously a little bit difficult for him to get about so we just wanted to cater for that as long as all three shots are within the circle and touching the line is considered to be a in if it's if it's not touching the line anyway it's out so all three shots must be in the circle once you've achieved that and you've got three attempts at that you can then go on to the deer silhouette and the deer silhouette is actually simulating a deer in a humane position to shoot it so that's broadside on and the scoring area although you can't see that from here but that's intentional the scoring area is what is considered to be a heart lung shot so as long as the round is in the area that is considered to be a clean kill then that's in basically that's uh, acceptable um, and therefore the the scoring area is much larger on on that target so it's effectively the the heart lung okay so initially we'll fire three shots at the left hand zeroing target so if you just want to get control of the rifle Along the little route we take, there'll be some steer silhouettes at various locations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you whether it's a safe or an unsafe shot. It's no trick. It's either safe or it's not. There's actually four silhouettes, but we'll come to that in a minute. We'll walk back up the track a little bit and then we'll come along down here. So for the safety element, there's 10 questions. Um, the 10 questions are from the bank of 24 from the training manual. So you've already familiarised yourself with that. It's just a random selection. Again, there's no tricks. It's just, it's just an honest answer. I'm not actually looking for, you know, A is, B is, C is. For example, um, if I asked you about a high C, you just want the security issues, potential mm -hmm. issues to get in and out, etc. So just go through it in your own words. And I'll just ask you the questions as we're working along the track. And then I say at various times, I'll point out to you the, the deer silhouettes. What sort of things would you be looking for uh, while you were doing that? Good potential areas to stop from or um, potential fire positions and stuff like that. But other uh, things would be hazards and what other things are in the area. Um, high chair itself, make sure that it's secure. And what, what could have happened to that? Uh, wind damage uh, to the book in it or there could be any number of things uh, wrong for it so you would obviously want to check it all for okay i think the sporting community has got a little bit of wind of this and um em belief the, the the knife makers ross and and barry down there have, have donated a knife for him and also some of the other sort of sporting guides childers you know jason doyle jeff garrett have got on board so hopefully we're going to do a little bit of filming more filming of him and I'd like to try and get him around and shoot all six UK deer species. He's shot raw uh, with us, he's shot red with us, although I'm going to go and try and get him a decent sort of stag. But we hopefully will get him out over the next, well, over the next year or so and, uh, and get down with some of these guys who are all sort of willing to, to get on board and hopefully we'll film that and that will come to you in future episodes of The Shooting Show. Paul Childerly there, showing that stalking is available to everyone. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Bass gave evidence to MPs this week on why a ban on 50 calibre rifles is a bad idea. The Offensive Weapons Bill is now at committee stage and still includes a proposal to prohibit firearms producing energy over 10,000 foot-pounds. Christopher Graffius told politicians that 50 cal shooting is a legitimate, lawful and safely conducted sport and said there were a lot of myths about a type of rifle that most people haven't even seen, let alone used. 
Great Britain just can't stop winning international medals for shooting. Nathan Hales is the latest athlete to win one, taking bronze in the men's trap at the ISSF World Cup in Tucson. Breaking 118 targets in qualifying, he made it to the final in second place. In the final, it looked like he'd exit in fourth, but he went clean through the last five targets to overhaul France's Sebastian Guerrero into a medal spot. Keep up with all your competitive shooting news in Clay Shooting Magazine. A government minister has acknowledged that heather burning has a role to play in moorland management. After gamekeepers stepped in to help tackle the Saddleworth Moor blaze, a DEFRA minister said that burning in accordance with the law and the heather and grass burning code can help reduce fire risk. And she recognised the work being done by moor owners and managers. Basque chairman Peter Glenzer said that unmanaged heather moorland has a greater fire risk and such fires are more difficult to control. And finally, we'll see you at the Game Fair this weekend. Taking place from Friday to Sunday at Ragley Hall, the UK's biggest field sports event looks like it'll be blessed with sunshine and high temperatures. Plenty of big names from the shooting industry will be there, along with an extensive clay line, gun dog scurries, air gun ranges, main arena demos and a lot more. We'll be there too, scouring the aisles or hanging out on the sporting rifle stand. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching, please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and if you're not a member of Basque it's time to join now, Basque looking after your sport, looking after you, this has been The Shooting Show.